and the meeting is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jeremy. I spent many years being an antisocial, confused mess. Just the thought of being around other people used to make me so anxious, I would do anything to get out of it. Because of that, I always only had a few people in my life and always found jobs that I could do alone or just with maybe one other person. Since coming to Plainfield and being exposed to these teachings and to practitioner support, I've turned into someone that not only has a purpose, but also into someone who feels comfortable around people. This past week, I had the opportunity to meet some new people, and I had a wonderful time. It's hard to state how impossible that would have been five years ago, other than to just say it wouldn't have happened. I'm so grateful for the healings that Christian Science has brought into my life. It is a constant blessing to be a member of this church and to be learning these life-changing lessons. Thank you. And now I have a testimony from Diana in Berlin and Vienna. Hello, this is Diana from Berlin and Vienna. I'm in Vienna now, and I want to express such deep gratitude to this church for all that I'm learning about handling animal magnetism. As I've said in previous testimonies, I'm dealing with a very difficult situation in a very important personal relationship, and I've been having to find out how to handle animal magnetism. It is through this church that I have been getting more and more clear and more and more competent in handling it. I'm sure I still have a long way to go, but I feel like I'm in a very good position right now. Out of the blue, back in June, a friend of mine whom I haven't spoken with for at least a year, she invited me to come to her beautiful house in France. When I arrived, I felt such a pain in my hip from the stress of the year. It was like all of this stress was just going into my hip. And the funny thing is that I had to, was trying to figure out what I should bring as a gift to my friend. And I thought, you know, I brought some food because I knew we'd enjoy that. But I also thought, what, what can I, I knew she didn't like things and I was trying to figure out what to bring. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to bring my spiritual awareness and I'm going to talk about God and I'm going to tell her everything I've learned and introduce her to science and health. And, and that's exactly what I did. We had just wonderful talks. I, I knew she'd be open to this because her mother would pray and we've talked about God in the past, but it turned out that this week was so incredible for me. I healed and on the second day, that hip pain was gone and just felt so rejuvenated. And I couldn't thank her enough for what she did for me. But she was saying to me, I can't thank you enough because you've renewed my faith in God. And all of the talking that we did just really apparently made a big impact for her. And what's interesting is that when my friend picked me up at the airport, she told me that she had lost three rings in her yard. And before she picked me up, she found two but she still couldn't find the third. So we were looking around during the week and we still hadn't found it. Well, after she dropped me off at the airport for me to go home, she came back home and she asked God how she could find this ring. Just, she said, God, please tell me how I can find it. And the answer was to go out in the evening with a flashlight and look. And that's what she did. And of course, she found the ring sparkling in the gravel. So I want to just thank so deeply this Plainfield Independent Christian Science Church for giving me the sustenance for being able to share this with my friend and with so many of my friends, because I'm just sharing it all the time. And it's 
something that I think the world needs desperately right now. Those of us who are in need of connecting to God, to the divine, to aligning with God, to putting God first so that everything else falls into place. And I am so grateful to Plainfield because you are giving those of us who are all over the world a place to go to. And I I just want to thank you all so deeply. I can't thank you enough. Have a good evening. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the beautiful readings tonight. I'm very grateful for a protection that I had during a heavy rainstorm recently while driving. We were redirected off the road that we were on due to floods and ended up in a maze of back roads. Each turn seemed to be blocked off for one reason or another due to the floods. And at one point, it started to feel like we were trapped. And then the heavy rain started again. But using the prayers that I have learned here and from the watches, the rain stopped very shortly after that. And then I continued to pray for all the workers, the homeowners, the drivers, and animals um, when I would see the different things. It really opened my eyes to the importance of praying for all of those around us. Sometimes it's easy to lose that sense of what's going on around you when you aren't necessarily experiencing some of the challenges. So it was a very good experience for me there. Later, when we got home, we did find out that we had been protected from a mudslide. Um, I'm very grateful, deeply grateful, for the watches at this church and learning how to watch. I'm very grateful for this church and for Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy and her writings. Thank you. Thank you. Colleen from Massachusetts, go ahead. Good evening. Tonight I'd like to express my gratitude to Mary Baker Eddy and for giving us Christian science and all of the rules that keep us so safe. And recently I've been experiencing a lot of mesmerism in different forms, whether it's the pains that I've been experiencing in my body, discord in relationships, a lot of fear and some depression. And I just reached out to God and said, you know, help me, what what do I need to know here? And I got the clear response, you're the expression of good. And I thought, yes, this is just the light, the promise that I needed. And I thought, I am the expression of good. All the thoughts that come to me, whether it's part of my body or people that are in my thinking, everyone is an expression of good. My body's an expression of good. Dogs and cats and people and places, the weather and everyone and everything is an expression of good. And if I don't see it that way, I know it's mesmerism. And I know how to handle it because I just wipe it out of my thinking and replace it with an expression of good or see the good there. And this has been great. It's lifted me. It's made me feel so much better. If I get a pain, I say, absolutely not. This is not an expression of good. Therefore, it's not a part of me. If there's discord in relationship, I say, nope, that's the child of God. And he or she is the expression of good. And I see the truth. And it's been so wonderful, so helpful to me. And I want to give gratitude to practitioner help from this church who gives me so much love and support. And all of the members in the website, because I was out of town and I could turn to the website and get so much warmth and love from the website, all of the articles and everything. And also, I'd like to give gratitude for the readings and the music tonight. Everything's been just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Day Day from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm thankful for learning through Christian science that every healing comes with a new lesson learned. And I've come to realize that it's what I learn that offers the healing. 
when I used to have problems, I always thought that I was healed once they went away or were corrected. For example, if I had a financial issue, I thought the healing came when I got the money I needed, rather than from learning, which I eventually did, that there is no lack because God provides all that I need right when I need it and not a moment sooner or later, and his provision is abundant. Over the years, I've learned many lessons like this with help from reading the Bible, Science and Health, and other publications on our website. And it's made me much more alert and attentive to what God is showing and telling me that I need to know when issues come about. When facing a challenge, I can now ask outright, Father, what do I need to learn from this? And when I listen patiently, the answer always comes. This practice is helping me to understand and trust God more. It's allowing me to be of better help to others, and I'm very grateful for this new way of living with less fear, focusing less on suggested problems and more on absolute resolutions. I'm so grateful for everything that's going on in this church, all that I'm learning. Thank you so much for tonight's readings and for all the testimonies given so far. I'm very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Barbara. Barbara from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Hello. Uh, tonight I'd like to express gratitude for the correction of Plainfield practitioners. Uh, today I had occasion to be corrected by both of them. Uh, the temptation came afterward to think it's too hard, but then I remembered that uh, Mrs. Eddy had something to say about whining over the demands of truth, and that's, that's not where we want to go. <laughs> um, incidentally, the, um, the corrections resulted immediate, in immediate healing in our home, um, and I hope a continuing lesson. The readings on forgiveness were most helpful and beautifully read. It's a help to me, too, that the printed version of the Wednesday service is available well ahead. Thank you, God, for the practitioners and the church, including every devoted member. Thank you. Thank you. Shardell. Good evening. Thank you for those readings and our music. My gratitude this evening has been told before by another member but I must speak to it again. The way everything links together for teaching and understanding is a very holy thing. It starts with a lesson sermon studied each day, then we come to Wednesday with the readings and service. Then we have the forum posts, which speak to the lesson, Bible studies, and then the round table to tie everything together and the grand finale, as it has been called, of the Sunday service. I know that because of the spiritual way that is orchestrated by people uh, here and then people all over the globe are blessed and I wish to say thank you. Also that everything that I'm learning every week through all of the things that I mentioned, I use in my prayers and watches. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Bruce. I guess we, I'm sure we've been taught in Christian science that God is the source of all good. We see anything good, God is the source of it. And I'd like to share something good that's happened recently and thank God for it. We had a chance to be together with uh, some family members. There were six children all together and 11 adults. And I just remember praying beforehand, God governs this event and nobody's human will does. And they were together I, about four or five days. And you know, there's children of various ages. 
there were never any conflicts. The children played together so well. Not only that, they looked out for each other. And uh, there wasn't any fighting or crying, nobody wanting what they wanted. It was just a harmony. And the same thing was true with the adults. Everybody was looking out for everybody else and not wanting what they wanted, but rather just wanting the good for everyone. And as a result, it was a time of harmony. And I'm thanking God for it because He was the source of it all. And it was a wonderful example that our God is indeed good and He's everywhere and He's with everyone. And that's the basic fact of living. So thank you, Father, for all the good. Nancy. Nancy from New Jersey. Go ahead. Good evening. I'd like to express my gratitude tonight for the beautiful readings on forgiveness. I have so much to be grateful for. I am so grateful to God for his ever presence and his power. To this Plainfield Church, where I'm being taught Mrs. Eddy's pure Christian science, how to pray correctly and how to apply these truths, I am so deeply grateful for my Plainfield practitioner for her strong and calm and loving support. I am grateful for our watches where I am seeing firsthand the proof of man's receptivity to the Word of God. And I am grateful to be able to know and to see that no matter how dire a situation may seem to be, that I have learned here that right there is the Christ truth in action. I just wanted to express my gratitude for everything that this church does and gives to all. I am so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Wendy from Georgia, go ahead. Yes, thank you for the lovely readings on forgiveness this evening. I would also like to express my gratitude for a blessing that we had this week. My daughter Alexia is a senior in high school this year, and an opportunity for her to apply for an internship was recently presented to her. The internship would take place in the afternoon, and she would be able to earn high school credit for participating if she was accepted. She applied and was invited to interview with a graphics design firm here in Savannah. Since she studied graphic design for the past three years at the Savannah Arts Academy where she attends, this internship seemed to be a perfect fit for her. The thought came to me to recommend to Alexia that she put a portfolio together of her design work to share with the owner of the design firm where she would be interviewing, which she did. The interview was held last week um, in the article by Mary Baker Eddy entitled Place. She says, the place you seek is seeking you, the place you need needs you. Divine principle brings need and supply together for mutual good. This was most helpful, as were other articles I found on the Plainfield website that were focused on the subject of employment. Two days ago, we received word from her school that the design firm was very impressed with Alexi and her work, and they offered her the internship, and she'll start next Monday. I'm so grateful for this beautiful unfoldment of God's plan for my daughter and for the many blessings he continually bestows upon all of his children. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, Gary or Mary, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for the readings tonight. Um, it brought back, uh, for me, a very important healing uh, that I had uh, early in my adult life. Uh, when I was in college, um, participating in sports, uh, in one game, uh, in opposing 
uh, team opposing member of that team uh, broke my leg. And it seemed deliberate. Uh, it created quite an imposition for me uh, at school that year. Um, and I had a real hard time not being really, really angry for this guy for deliberately breaking my leg. And I recovered and um, did fine through the rest of my school years, but I hung on to this deep feeling of why would somebody do this? And and I felt great anger uh, at times about this. And it uh, bothered me for quite a while until uh, my wife and I moved to Plainfield and started working with a practitioner in Plainfield who uh, began to teach me what forgiveness is all about. And one of the things that this practitioner uh, taught was that hatred only hurts the one who is hating. Hatred is a plague spot that spreads its virus and kills at last. Mary Baker Eddy. And that we forgive the sins of others, not for their good, but for our own good, as God forgives us. It took me a while to really feel forgiveness for this person. But I realized I, I, I knew I had to for my own good. And I remember the day that I finally said, okay, whoever you are, wherever you are, I forgive you. You must have had a hard life that would cause you to do something like that. And for that, I am sorry for you. And I forgive you. And I'll never forget the relief I felt releasing that burden of hatred from my shoulders. It was a liberating experience. So I'm very grateful to learn the importance of forgiveness and to be able to forgive even those who seem to do the worst things and the meanest things. So thank you very much for those readings. It's great to be here tonight. Thank you. Dale. Dale from Virginia, go ahead. Okay, Dale, we're not, we don't hear you, possibly. Oh. Um, yes, I'm sorry, I w Hello? Okay, go ahead, we hear you now. I'm sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> Um, first of all, thank you so much for those wonderful readings tonight and for all the testimonies. They're so helpful. Um, I re we recently got back from a, a very well-anticipated, happy, joyous family anniversary vacation with children and grandchildren. And I had asked, actually, a practitioner in this church for a little support just to know that that. I would know that God was there and we would all be blessed in, in all the good that was going to happen. Um, and it was a, an absolutely wonderful trip. It's, the weather was perfect, even though at times it was predicted not to be, and everything worked out so beautifully. Um, and um, the practitioner reminded me about the, the watching point on travel. Um, that we really need to do more study than, than not. And we certainly don't take a vacation from God. He certainly doesn't take a vacation from us. So I was, I had 
things with me, and I was able to get a lot of studying in, and it was wonderful. Everyone had their own things to do at times, and then we would all gather together at night for dinner. Um, there was one day where there was just one little, one situation where someone got their feelings hurt, and they decided they weren't going to come to dinner that night. And I didn't discuss the situation with the person, but I just offered a few words that I remembered from one of Mrs. Eddy's articles um, entitled God's Nearness. And it's something that I remembered because it really meant a lot to me, and, uh, and I wrote it down, and I've kept it with me. But it is, it's this quote, All the past there is to us is our present consciousness of it. And I, I shared that with this person, and I said, you know, just, just drop it. You know, this doesn't have to continue or, you know, bother anybody. Just drop it. And that's all I said. And later that evening when we gathered for dinner, this person who had been very upset came to the table all smiles and bubbly and ha- happier than, than they had come any other time, not that they weren't happy other times, but they were really happy. And there was not another word, another mention of of that little incident that happened. And our whole, the whole time together was just a joyous, wonderful time. And I'm so grateful for the truth that we have to work with in in this science. And also, a thank you for all the, um, the things that we can access on our iPhones. I mean, wherever we are, when we were out of the country, and I was able to get everything from the church website and access things, and it was just wonderful. I'm so grateful for everything we have in this church and all the giving and the love, and it is powerful. I thank you so much. Thank you. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. I'm so grateful tonight for the preventative effect of Christian science. Just two weeks ago, my husband had gone out and seemed to be taking longer than usual coming back. I was praying all morning, and part of my prayer was that wherever everyone was, God was there. Everyone was in the presence of God, and that he protects, and he gives every need. He meets every need. I was knowing that because of this omnipresent effect of God's love, no one can be in any danger. About an hour after that, I, he, he came home, and he had been in an accident. He was stationary, waiting to, for the traffic to move, but there was a, a towing truck ahead of them, the traffic, and a lady driving very fast hit the back of his car rather hard. The the beautiful demonstration was God's love and his care and his protection. Even though this lady's car was totaled, he sustained no injuries, and the back of our car was damaged some, but overall... My husband was fine. I thank God so much for this. I remember uh, so many years ago, something like that happened too with my son, and he was totally protected. So I'm so grateful for the teaching that we ought to stay grateful, joyful, and praying. That praying without ceasing has effect more than we know. I'm just so grateful that Mrs. Eddy, the revelator to this age, has given clear explanation of how our lives should change when we take the route or the road of Christian science living. I'm so grateful for Christ Jesus' mission of love and all that I'm learning through Christian science. Grateful for the beautiful readings tonight, for the music, and for all the testimonies that truly attest to God's loving care. Happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Mary. 
thank you so much for those beautiful readings tonight. It's always so good to be reminded about forgiveness, and I was very grateful to hear them and also the beautiful testimonies. In the lesson this week, in the responsive readings, Colossians 1, uh, there's some very beautiful passages that have meant a lot to me. Uh, quite some time ago, I was alerted to them and was told that this is a, a perfect prayer, really, for anyone that you love or maybe people that you don't even know, but it, it is a perfect prayer, um, and it is this, Colossians 1, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might, might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us to meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. At that time I knew of someone, uh, who was experiencing depression, and I wanted to pray him personally. It was someone close to me, so uh, I was told about this prayer. And when you think of it, I mean, re what really do you want for anyone? It's very easy maybe to tailor our prayers that we want specific things, you know, even things like a, where we <laughs> might want someone to go to college or where we might want someone to have a business or other kind of prayers that are personal prayers and not the real pure righteous prayer. But this prayer is that prayer of a, of a righteous prayer. First it says you don't, you cease not, but you pray constantly. Do not cease to pray for you all the time. And then that you might be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What more could we ask for someone than that they know the will of God and that they are filled with wisdom and spiritual understanding and that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. There again, to know that you will walk with God and to be pleasing in his sight and then strengthened with all might according to his glorious power what gives a person strength but God's power? And then under all patience and long-suffering, and even if someone's going through a trial, um, they can do it with joyfulness and also with giving thanks. And if you do that, you will be delivered from the power of darkness, whatever that darkness might be, a physical problem, a depression, mental anxiety, whatever it is, God delivers you from it. And so I worked with that prayer, and I did it unceasingly, and it broke the bondage of, that this person was under, the depression. I'm so very grateful for that. I've never forgotten it. I, I pray with that, Colossians 1, to this day. So I'm grateful that it was in our lesson this week, and that we can be thinking of it and praying with it. Such a joy to be here tonight. And thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you.